Hello, everyone, and welcome to Make Do Tell Story, Episode 7. Glad you're here. And uh, my name is Jamie. I'm getting better at this. Uh, I'm not guaranteeing it will continue, but yay, I remember. My name's Jamie. I work for the Kansas City Public Library, um, where I'm a youth librarian. I am also a storyteller, and I am here to share another story with you for you to take and learn and tell yourself. And the truth is, you may already know this one. You may have heard it like time after time after time. Um, but I don't know if you've told it yet. So I'm going to tell you the story of the three little pigs. Once upon a time, there was a mama pig and she had three little pigs. And she decided that today was the day to send them out into the world to find their fortunes or to make their fortunes, actually. Um, and so off they went and she had packed little lunches for them because making your fortune can make you hungry too. Down the road they went and they walked for a while and it wasn't long before they came across a farmer who in the back of his wagon had a huge pile of hay. And the first little pig looked at that pile of hay and said, oh, hey, this could be my new home and it won't even take all that long to do. Um, and so the other two pigs are like, I don't think that's a really good idea, but he was not to be deterred. And so he bought that load of hay, farmer put it on the side of the road from there, and he built very quickly a home in which he felt happy as a pig. And so he went inside, he opened up that snack that his mama had made him and he ate it down really fast. And then he was tired from that lack of exertion that he had done because he was a lazy pig and he took a nap. Well, the other two continued on down the road. It wasn't long before the second pig saw a man, well, they both saw him, but the second pig got excited. A man with a bunch of sticks on his back, almost twigs. But he was like, oh, hey, that will make a very fine house for me. And the third pig tried to talk him out of it, but he wasn't having it. Before long, he had built that house out of sticks. And he decided to settle right in open up the snack from his mama. And then he also settled in for a nap. Well, the third pig was like, I am looking for sturdy building materials. And it was just about then that another wagon came by, but this one was stacked full of bricks. And that was exactly what he was looking for. So he bought those bricks off of the, the brick maker and he settled in to build a house and it took him like all day he ate the snack his mama gave him but he kept on working he worked and he worked and he worked he took a brick he put the cement on it and he placed it on top of the next brick and the next and the next and the next and the next all day long and that sun was beginning to set right about the time he put the last brick in place and then put the roof on. And so he had saved a little bit of that snack because he knew he was gonna be really hungry when he got done. He finished his snack, he turned out the light and he was ready for bed. Well, it wasn't long after that, that the big bad wolf came walking down the road and he saw that first house made out of hay and he could smell the pig sleeping inside. Oh, he said, I sure do love me some pork. And he went up to that and he knocked on the door. Well, that was how flimsy that door was. You could hear all kinds of house noises rattling. And he called out, little pig, little pig, let me come in. Well, the little pig was no fool. He wasn't a complete fool, let's say that. He's like, oh no, 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 not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. 
And the wolf said, well then, I will huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And so he did. He huffed and he puffed and he blew. And that house collapsed. The hay went flying in the air, came back down on top of the pig. And the wolf came with his big mouth and went but that little pig was scrambling and he just avoided that big mouth and off down the lane he went running until he got to his second brother's house and he flew open the door and slid inside, slammed it behind him and locked it because the brother had forgotten to lock it. But he knew that that big bad wolf was going to be on his way and sure enough, it was just a moment later and the wolf said, little pigs, little pigs, let me come in. And both the pigs said, oh, no, 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 not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. And the wolf said, well, then I will huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And so he huffed and he puffed and he blew. And those twigs went flying, tumbling through the air, plop, right back down on those two little pigs who went scrambling to get out from under them just as the wolf's jaws clamped down, missed again. And down the road, those two little pigs skittered until they got to their brother's house. Well, you can be sure he locked the door, but they knocked and they knocked. And he got himself up out of bed, opened the door, because he knew it was his two brothers and in they skittered. He shut the door behind them because he could hear the wolf huffing down the lane. He locked the door back and uh, the two of them told him what was coming. And sure enough, little pig, little pig, let me in. And the little pig said, oh no, 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 not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. And the wolf said, well then I will huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And he huffed and he puffed and he blew. And he huffed and he puffed and he blew. And he huffed and he puffed and he blew and he huffed and he puffed. And that house was still standing. Well, the wolf was not to be outsmarted. He looked up at that house, chimney, and that's all he saw. He did not see the smoke coming up out of that chimney. He just started climbing up the roof. Well, the first little pig, he had put on a big pot of carrot and turnip soup. Um, to simmer all night long. But when he realized what that pig, that wolf was up to, he stoked the fire underneath it till he had a big roar going and he put the pot, the lid on the pot because that makes water boil faster. And that water got to boiling right about the time the wolf pulled himself up onto the roof. He skittered up to the chimney and without even looking, he hauled himself up and jumped straight down, feet first. The little pig heard him coming. He pulled the pot lid out of the way. Splash! Ha! He put the pit lid back on before that wolf could move. And then they let that wolf potato, potato, carrot, I forgot the potatoes earlier, potatoes, carrots, and turnip soup boil all night long. And that is the story of the three little pigs. All right, so what I wanted to tell you about this story is, uh, okay, so we talked about how you don't memorize a story. You don't just read it until you got every word in your head. But that doesn't mean some words you don't get in your head. Um, guess which ones? In this story, yes, 
Little pig, little pig, let me in. And the little pig said, no, no, no. Not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. And the wolf said, then I will huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. All of those are repeated in every single scene. So we've got the scenes where they're leaving their mama's house. We got the scenes where each one of them is finding the materials they're going to build their houses out of. Then we have the scenes where they have either built their houses or are building their houses and um, are either goofing off or are finishing a really sturdy house. And then here comes the wolf. Knock, knock, knock at each house. And so it goes. You do not memorize a story, but you remember how it flows. And you can memorize some of the dialogue and repeat it. Or you can memorize some of the dialogue and you don't repeat it. But in this instance, we're talking about dialogue that you use each time. So it's really worth your time to memorize it. And it just adds, and it really helps like little kids be able to follow your story. So that's a reason to kind of have the dialogue the same. And in fact, um, I don't know if you remember when you were a little kid, but maybe you, you may have said the same things right along with uh, your teacher or the storyteller or whoever's telling you the story, your mom, your dad, your grandma, your grandpa, just whoever it was. Um, all right, so that's the story of the three pigs. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to tell you today is, because you've been, you've been doing this now, if you've followed along with, uh, this is our seventh episode, so if you follow along with the other six, you've got six stories in the bag, ready to tell whenever. Or maybe you're still working on them. Or maybe you thought, I can't even, eh, you know, I'm not sure that I'm a very good storyteller. Um, here's some news. This came from my storytelling teacher. She, she just sent this out this week, so it was perfect. She said, sometimes you got to be really bad at something to be able to get good at it. And she is absolutely right. There was one time when I was telling her a story and I did a terrible job. Terrible. It was like my whole mind went blank and I couldn't remember anything and I was stumbling through it. And when I got to the end, she said, that was a really good first telling. What? That was terrible. She said, no, a good first telling. And that's the thing. A first telling gets a lot more leeway than a 383rd telling. So what's good when you're telling it the first time may not be good the 383rd time, but it's fantastic the first time. And you can't get to the 338th, 383rd telling until you've done the first telling, the second, the third, the fourth, all the way up. It takes practice. If you want to be really good at something, practice, practice, practice. Um, so go forth, practice. And remember to come back next week if you're ready for a new story. They're here. So if you're like, I need to wait a week while I work on this one, then just come back two weeks later and the story from next week will be there. Um, and if you're interested, you can come tomorrow at one o'clock very same channel and you can see Miss Samantha teaching you how to create comics. You can even make a comic of the three pigs. And just along that line, um, you may know the story of, I forgot to turn the phone off. You may know the story of, that John, John Jeska told about the three pigs. Um, it's actually told from the point of view of the wolf. And that makes it a very different story. And we've talked about that before. So if you're getting bored with some of the stories that you've already learned, what you could do is go out back, pick out a different person, tell it from their point of view than the one that you tell it from normally. So in this one, this is what John Sheska did. He heard the story. The wolf told him the story from his point of view, and he shared it with us. It's a great book. I'm going to put that link in the notes below here so you can go and find it real easy. Um, you can get um, the audio version on Hoopla. You can get the video version on Overdrive. All of these at kclibrary.org. Um, I'll make it easy. 
Um, and you're going to want to do both um, because they're just, the reader is fantastic on this and the illustrations are fantastic, especially if you're an artist, you'll want that. And if you're an artist, you'll really love this. So I've, I'm also going to include one where it's actually a story within a story. There's the father telling the story of the three pigs to his son to make the point that you got to get your work done before you go play or you end up in dire straits. Oh, I should have told you spoiler alert. Now you know what happens. But that's not the point. The point is to go and listen to the story. The narration is really good. And it's really cool because it's, it's um, there's a painter uh, uh, with watercolor, which is my favorite medium. It's very unforgiving, which I don't know. But it's beautiful. You can't make mistakes. You have to start all over. Which is unlike storytelling. Make a mistake. Cover it up, keep going. Just remember that. So anyway, the artist is drawing or painting the picture of the three little pigs while the narration is happening. And so I threw that one in just because I think it's awesomely cool. Um, and it's another way for you to get to hear the story. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, go look for the notes underneath. Um, come back tomorrow uh, if you want to learn how to draw comics. Come back... Thursday, if you like to make stuff, uh, art, science, uh, Miss Kaisha will be here and she'll be doing cool stuff. And just so you know, um, right now we're doing it with stuff you can usually find around your house. But we also want to do some other stuff that may be a little more complex or it may be it will go with some of our other story uh, offerings or storytelling, story time, uh, different programs that we're doing, especially Miss Kaisha's. Um, that one. So we're going to put together kits that you can pick up later, like maybe in June. We're still working out the details, but we'll have a kit where you can come in to the library, um, like you can come in and get a, a hold right now. And uh, you don't stick around, you just grab it and you go, and then you'll be ready to do the, the activity yourself. It's going to be fun. Um, so all that exists for you. Remember, the library has all kinds of stuff for you, even when our doors are closed. Um, so tune in, kclibrary.org. Thanks for tuning in today. Hope to see you next week. Bye.